All right, so Sunny, as you know, Death Knight has been released in Hearthstone. Really fun, exciting class. Hearthstone has never been more popular. This is where we're going to put the Kappa in the video. Uh, <laughs> but I, th <laughs> I thought I would show you what Death Knight looks like from someone who doesn't play Hearthstone to see if you can guess how good the cards are. Now, before you even guess, there might be some buffs and nerfs to cards, but I think we already have a pretty good grasp of how good cards are for Death Knight. I, I quit playing when Illidan was released, so it's fun to see them pull out another big gun to get players to come back to Hearthstone. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how good the cards are, and maybe after we record this video, I'll, uh, I'll actually try it myself, because I am pretty excited, but I did wait for this video before I tried them. Thank you. I appreciate you. You're beautiful. Before we get to the cards, I have to explain a couple things how Death Knight works. Uh, so the first thing is the hero power, uh, because the, actually I should probably explain this concept first, which is the corpse mechanic. But whenever a friendly minion dies for a Death Knight, they get something called a corpse. This corpse uh, resource can be used for cards that you'll see later on in this video. But basically, it's whenever a friendly minion dies. And I have to mention this just in case I show a card, because I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I did. If you if a card says risen corpse, like you could raise five corpses those risen corpses don't give you corpses back so you can't double dip into corpses which leads us into the hero power so the hero power is ghoul charge it is two mana they summon a one one ghoul with charge it can go face but then it dies at the end of your turn this hero power will give you a corpse this is actually very vital to demon to demon hunter to death knight's plan last thing is the rune system so in game, the rune system is irrelevant, but for deck building, it matters. So there are three runes you can pick from this blood, frost and unholy. When you build a deck, you can spec into three of them. You can go triple blood and there are reasons to go triple blood. You can go triple frost. Again, there are reasons to go triple frost, but you could also go two blood, one frost. You can go mm -hmm. two unholy, one blood, whatever you want to do. Some of the cards have requirements for you to be spec in a certain amount of runes. So you can't put a triple blood card in if you're not specting for triple blood. So we're going to start off. The first card I'm going to send you is a runeless card. So this means that you don't have to be specced into any of them to put into your deck. Frostmorn. OK, this is a weapon. Wait, I remember this one. I played during um, during that <laughs> expansion. I forgot the name, like Frozen Throne something. And this was a card you could get from the Lich King, right? Yes. What? Yeah. So uh, this is one of the obviously Frostmorn. Frostmorn is very iconic in Warcraft lore into the Lich King. So they definitely wanted to add it into the game. This is the exact card that you get from the Lich King. Uh, it is what that's what it is. So they okay. decided to just you can put it into your deck if you want to. OK, so this was Death Rattle. Summon every minion killed by this weapon and it's five power, three armor dur durability. Yeah, durability. yeah. Would this be a powerful effect in Rune Terra? Actually, yeah, that will be insanely broken in Rune Terra. So I'm going to guess that if you can get to turn seven and you're not like dying, so maybe in like that tank rune spec you were talking about, maybe it would be good there in the, the red, the blood rune. I, I, I could see it, it's good there because you can like get to turn seven. If you're tanky enough, uh, you can kill some minions, bring it back on your board to have like a win con for your control deck. I'd say it's, it's probably playable in that one, but it seems pretty bad in the other two because it's seven mana, right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, you could also just go face and hit for 15. That's also an option. But this card's absolutely trash. Uh, it's it's virtually unplayable. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Seven mana for this kind of effect seems really good if the game was super value oriented. But Harson hasn't really been value or oriented for a very long time. There are better stuff in blood for you to be doing at seven mana. I'll just put it like that. OK, uh, so now we're going to go to a triple blood card. So remember, you have to be specced in triple blood for you to put this in your deck. OK. So this one to give your hero plus five health, spend three corpses to gain five more and draw a card. This is give health. This is not heal health. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. So wow. it raises your maximum health total. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I just posted a video, I think yesterday, where I got 100 health. Oh, 100? OK, so <laughs> <laughs> wait, so Reno could actually heal you for like 99 now if you yes. have one health? Yes, he oh can. Oh, my God. Yes, OK, can. that's pretty cool. So I guess the question is, is it worth going that deep into those runes just to get this card? Um, since it's a tank class and you also draw a card on top of that five health, I think this would be very, very powerful. If this effect was in Rune Terra, it would be like incredibly broken depending on the region it's in. Uh, if this is a tanky class, so they're durable, they get just 10 extra health, they get to heal a little bit. This seems insane. Seems like a very, very good card. Yeah, so this card is pretty, pretty great for the archetype. I wouldn't say it's like game winning in itself. It's not broken or anything in Hearthstone, at least. But it is okay. one of the more like it is probably one of the biggest reasons you want to go triple blood, because obviously raising your health, there's a lot of tools that help you gain more life and uh, keep getting life steal. So 
when you raise your health and you still take damage, you still get that 10 health because it raises your maximum health. There are cards that give you a ton of life. I, I, I don't think I put them in this video, but basically there are other real like effects for this triple blood deck. Got it. All right. So this is a one blood card. So you only need to spec one blood to get this card in your deck. Okay. I need to completely like rethink <laughs> what I what I say about this card, but if, because if you're telling me that a two mana draw a card and gain ten health is like just okay or like not completely broken, it's like Hearthstone is clearly a completely different game than Rune Terra. Uh, so this is patchwork, seven mana, four six, only one rune, so you can play two of the other rune and one blood rune just to get this. Okay, battle cry yeah. destroy a random me in your opponent's hand deck and battlefield. Wait. What the hell is Hearthstone doing over there? Are you serious? Wait, you you have to consistently like play against this. It's a new class and it's only one rune. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess, Raran, that every time you queue into a Death Knight, which is gonna be pretty often because it's a new class, you're gonna have three cards destroyed like almost every match. I would be fuming at this card. <laughs> this seems really like this seems so good. How wait? How far did Hearthstone come for just to like print a card like this? Blood it's, is it's pretty too. surprising. It seems so frustrating to play against, most of all. Yeah, this has to be crazy, right? Right? I would say that this is probably the best card that Blood has currently. It okay. is absolutely ridiculous that that's what seven mana does in Hearthstone now. Mm -hmm. It's so much tempo, right? Like, it's it's insane. You kill a minion, you kill something in their hand, and you kill something in their deck, you could just ruin, you could just win from this card on its own. It's yeah. a win condition in itself. Not going to be nerfed yet, but I could see how we could already tell how many or how much people hate this card. Like this is probably going to be one of the most hated cards of all time in Hearthstone just because of what it is. Yeah, just looking at it made me angry. So I, I can see that. Uh, okay, this is a one frost card and reborn is it will resummon the minion at one health. Um, So the, the one thing is that you said frost kind of plays like a combo, combo-y play style. Uh, yes. This doesn't yep. seem like it really does anything for a combo play style. it seems like it's just a good card it seems like it's just like okay i'm pretty happy putting this in my deck i can see this card being one of the reasons um especially for maybe unholy if, if unholy is mid range i could see you going like to unholy if that's a good deck and then one frost just for the Tessarian. That seems pretty good. Uh, yeah, it seems solid. It seems like an OK card to me. So I feel like you you really hit the mark there. It's just a like a pretty decent card. I wouldn't even call it like great. Like it's not like winning the game or anything, but mm -hmm. it is. It does have a place in Frost because Frost inevitably wants to just kill you with a bunch of spells, right? So if you get that early chip damage in, it kind of matters. It's also a very sticky and annoying minion to deal with. But generally speaking, yeah, pretty, pretty standard card here. Nothing too special, nothing too spectacular. It's just a pretty good card. What about this card? This card is runeless. Three mana, two, two, undead, battle cry, and death rattle. Draw a card. <laughs> no, th <laughs> this has to be. This has to be insane, right? Wait, I, like every time I read a card, I'm reading it like I'm pretending it's in Rune Terra. If if there is a card reveal for Rune Terra and I read this, I'm like, okay, yeah, no, you just put this in every deck. This would literally be a reason in Rune Terra to go for like a second region just for this card. It seems completely busted. You put this in every single deck, I'm sure. Uh, okay, it's not. I wouldn't say busted, but yeah, it's a good card. It's really good, right? Uh, it's it's like a it's not a neutral card. It's like a neutral Death Knight Arcane Intellect, which is like the standard for drawing cards in Hearthstone. Like the, the standard is usually three mana to draw two. This is like a delayed version of that, but you also get a two two stat line and it's undead. So it gives you a it, it's undead. And when it dies, it gives you a corpse. So there's yeah. like an additional benefit for it. It is ran, I think, in every Death Knight deck. I'm pretty sure just because neutral card draw that is pretty efficient is great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty spot on there, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. I, uh just translating cards to Rune Terra is pretty effective, but I do feel like Hearthstone has a lot more effects that are just completely crazy. Uh, three Blood Runes for this one, all right? Okay, seven mana, seven, seven. Alexandros Mograin. Wait. <laughs> for the rest of the game, you just deal three to their face? Yeah. Uh, they can't stop it. There's no way to actually remove it unless they just die or they go immune. Okay. Um, hmm. It's, it's basically like a seven mana do nothing. Seven mana. Se I, I mean, it, the effect seems so good, but it doesn't do anything immediately. If you tell me that like sometimes you can't play patchwork against some other strategies because they're they're too fast or just too low impact sometimes from patchwork, then Alexander's Mograine has to be worse than that. So... I think you have to play this in Blood DK. I think it's okay. I think it's just fine, but something's going to be stuck in your hand. I, uh, okay, so stuck in your hand is a really good way of putting it. In order for this to actually be worth it, like how much like how much mana is doing three damage, right? That's like two mana, basically, to do it once. You're going to hold this card in your hand for the hope 
that you could actually play this and three damage is going to end up being relevant to actually win you a game when, you know, probably other stuff is going to kill you or you're going to kill them with something else. This is like an insurance just in case you have no other win condition. But the bigger problem with cards like this, and I'm sure it's like Runeterra if they have effects like this, is you need to draw this pretty early on. So for three blood, it fits into the archetype. So you still put it in for an insurance case. We'll see if it gets cut soon, uh, but at the moment it is still playable. All right, so this is a, this is one of the cases where this is going to spend corpses. OK, we saw one already with Vampiric Blood. This is a runeless Death Knight card. OK, <laughs> wait, uh, OK, five corpses, huh? Is it? I feel like that's that's like average. That has to be like an average amount, right? Like that. That's not something you get easily. If Death Knight has any buffs, like if you put like a big buff on this on the Malignant Horror, then you get a copy of that, right? It keeps those buffs. Like if you make this yeah. a if it gives this plus three plus three, you just get a five seven every time. Yep, yep. Uh, I will give you the the hint that there are cards that ha can hand buff this, and Ooh. there are cards that you can play. Well, it's on board to buff it too. Hand buffing. Okay. Hmm. I think this. I think this is pretty good actually. If you if you can build your deck around this, this is such a powerful effect. I hate to break it to you, but this card's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, so I think you, you, you kind of talked about how you kind of need five corpses in order for this to be good, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have five corpses, this card is literally just going to be there on its own doing absolutely nothing. Now, I'm not going to say that this card doesn't have potential because you're right. There might be a case where it just snowballs out of control and you just win a game. But I have yet to see anyone actually play this card and let that happen. OK, uh, this is one unholy blight fang three mana three three. It's a beast none undead. Battlecry infect all enemy minions. When they die, you summon a 2-2 zombie with taunt. So this is a way to punish your opponent for going wide, but it's like worse than that druid card because it's it's not immediate, right? I, what? Oh, spreading plague? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so wait, does yeah. the 2-2 give you a uh, a corpse? Yes. Yeah, when, okay. I'll give you a corpse. This seems good. This seems like a really good card. A, a three mana 3-3 three, three isn't bad. Even if you infect two or three minions still get three two twos or two two twos i don't mind putting this in sometimes sometimes it'll just give me like a huge effect and sometimes you know i just play a three mana three three it's like a good card yeah i i think it you're kind of you're kind of right but you're kind of wrong it really depends on the matchup uh that's what it usually comes down to right this card can just auto win you a game if your opponent's playing for the board in the early game but sometimes you're gonna go against a deck that doesn't really play for the board and you don't really care about getting a three mana three three but if they have one minute worst case, it's like a three minute five five, right? You delay two two at the moment. It's probably a little bit average to just circumstantial, depending on what you're going against. But it is not a bad card. like this is a fine card. So this is I didn't show you a triple unholy uh, card, but this is a triple frost card. Deal five damage, freeze all enemy minions. Oh, the, oh, no, <laughs> Vietnam flashbacks. Some of the five five frost worm as well. OK, this 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 has to be insane. Deal five damage, some of the five five and you literally freeze the entire board. I, <laughs> if I had to put like a number on it, I think this would legit be a 10 10. But uh, the only way that that I could lower that number or I would lower that number is if frost was like not worth going uh, like if they don't have any other good cards because you can't play any other uh, blood or green runes. Th this seems like the best card you showed me so far with patchwork, probably. Um, <laughs> if somehow Hearthstone found a way to put both Frost Frostworm's Fury and Patchwork into one deck, I would probably never ever touch Hearthstone again. I already kind of quit, <laughs> but I like to log in from time to time. But this, like the the the, the freeze mage flashbacks I get are so frustrating. And if this is a combo deck that just like does chip damage and it kills you one turn, this seems so good. It has to be good. Yeah. This has to be uh, one of the best cards. So. It is, God, I want to say the best card in Frost. I want to say it. there are there are other really good cards in Frost, but this is probably the main reason you're triple specking, right? Very, very powerful effect. This mm -hmm. can straight up win you a game, like straight up. Uh, the logic bond or the, the circumstances is like your opponent plays with a board. You deal five damage to their face. You're summoning a five five. You freeze their board. And then you may have noticed that this card is an epic. So you can have two of them in your deck. And then right. you can do it again the following turn. Next thing you know, you have 10, 10 worth of stats on the board and they die because they can't they just can't do anything. Right. You're, they're stuck overall, man, for Death Knight. I think you did a really good job, um, except for Frostmourne. That was a little little sketchy, but it's fine. You're, you're, that was the first one. We always get we always get mulligan. So rather than showing you only Death Knight cards, I'm going to show you four other cards from this expansion. OK, and all of these cards are ranging from absolute crazy to just like you're you're going to look at this card and just be like, what what they would actually put this in the game. And we're going to see how well you can evaluate these. All right. 
before we even show you this card, before you even read that card, uh, okay. I'm going to ask you this question because I'm very curious to see what you're going to say. Where uh -huh. do you think Death Knight is currently in terms of the other classes? Like, do you think it's the best class in the game right now? Yeah. You think it's the best class of the game? Yeah, absolutely. Like I, when Demon Hunter came out, it was like it was like tier zero. I remember playing and quitting like two weeks after, not just because Rune Terror came out, but because I hated Illidan. I hated his face. So I'm going to assume <laughs> that when they release a new class like that, they just make it the best class in the game again. So I will tell you right now that it is not the best class in the game. In fact, most people are saying that it probably will be buffed. Uh -huh. So really? I'll, I'll, let me explain why. Let me explain why. When Demon Hunter came out, you may have remembered that the hero power and the way that the class played was very aggressive. You, because cards were so overtuned and very powerful, you can just kill your opponent before they can even react to you, right? Like that's that's the problem. Death Knight is not as aggressive. It's a much more mid range to like combo to control deck. So you could punish it a lot harder than Demon Hunter was. They also mm. probably learned a lot from Demon Hunter because, you know, that class was ridiculous. We'll have to wait and see how powerful Death Knight ends up being. But it is not the best class. It's not even close to the best class. I, I want to ask you one question, because whenever I look at Hearthstone, just like out of curiosity uh, in my time that I haven't played the game, and even before that, I would sometimes look at a, at, a, at a tier list, like a class tier list, and every single time there was consistently like one face in the top two, and that was that stupid Malfurion. Is it still Druid? That's like a number one. Is, is that still the case? Is it always Druid? I'm not going to answer that just because I want you to react to these cards first, and then I will explain. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is a six mana, six, six, neutral legendary Bone Lord Frost Whisper. <laughs> that's what they call Sick me too. Yeah. yeah, that's what they call me in high school. <laughs> Death rattle for the rest of the game. Your first card each turn costs zero. That seems pretty good. You die in three <laughs> turns? Okay, I, I mean, as, as much as people talk shit about Harso, that's fantastic. I love that they're making cards like this. Just straight up a line, you die in three turns. Oh god, okay. Um this is a hard one to evaluate. If this was in Rune Terra, it would be terrible. It would be so bad. Uh I'm, I'm gonna assume that Hearthstone is kind of the same way, even though there's not as much interaction because you just get to play your own turn. Because dying in three turns, you, you need to make sure you're gonna win like 100 percent Yeah, I, I I think it's not that good. I, I would if I had to guess, I'd say there's maybe one deck that can use this card well and nothing else beside that. Overall, it's probably pretty weak. Yeah, it's a, it's like a meme card for sure. It's a meme okay. card. Uh, there mm -hmm. are there is a lot of potential for this kind of effect. I will say that. Um, OK, what about this card? Eight mana, seven, seven, a nuper con battle cry, gain eight armor. This turn, your minions cost armor instead of mana. Yeah, see, this is the kind of shit I'm talking about with Druid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If, if Druid has good armor cards, which I assume they do if they just print the discard, they probably give some support. This seems completely nuts. You, you're going to cheat so much mana with this. So I because it's Druid, and the way I know Druid is it's, it's always just this really dumb class. I'm going to assume this is one of those cards that make it such a dumb class. I, uh, I, I would not be happy playing against this. No, I think this is very good. Yeah, so you said to me like a couple minutes ago, you're like, is Druid one of the best decks in the format? Uh, uh -huh. This is one of the reasons why it's one of the best <laughs> decks in the format. You think Death Knight could handle this card? Absolutely fucking not. If this card is played before you patchwork it, you lost. The game's oh. over. All right. Mm -hmm. What about this is the second last card, by the way. What about this one? OK, this is a seven mana, eight, eight legendary for Paladin and a Kronos. Battlecry sent all other minions two turns into the future. Huh? Wait, what the hell does that okay. mean? So I will explain. <laughs> okay, I'll explain this to you. So basically what happens is if you play this card, you get an 8-8, eight, eight, uh, but the minions on the board will disappear. They just ba You just basically send minions two turns into the future in the same board state that they were at. Ah, uh, so it, it's just a board clear, basically. I see, got it. Okay, in, in Rune Terra, there is a card called Buried in Ice which is basically just like put all minions into a landmark and they come back out after two turns. Uh, this seems Correct. somewhat similar, except, you know, on Rune Terra, you have like actual like statues on the board that can be removed and stuff. And that yeah. card is very, very good. Most of it, like depending on the deck you play, obviously. So just straight up like plopping a card down and saying, OK, see y'all in two turns. Seems really, really good, actually. Yeah, I would if I play Paladin, I would definitely make room for this card. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good way of saying it. I, I don't think this card has ever blown me away. Like it hasn't like, oh my God, like it just won me the game or won them the game or won me the game. But mm -hmm. it's good. Like it's it's just a card that in worst cases, you could just delay the turn two games, which can be very powerful. And in that time, right? Like this card is played at seven mana. So that means you get eight mana and then nine mana uh, of two turns to basically prepare for what's about to happen to you. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think you value it pretty accurately. It's just a good card. 
I, I, I love the wording they're putting on these cards. Yeah. You die in three turns. Send them to it's, the future. <laughs> so you, usually when a card is released, they people on Reddit are like, oh, this card's so cool. This one was like, huh? Like question mark, question mark, question mark. Like how does that even work? <laughs> this is the last card I'm going to show you. Uh, what do you think of this card? Sire Donatrius, 10 mana, 10, 10. Lifesteal, okay. Battle cry, deal five damage amongst enemies. Endlessly infuse one, deal one more. So infuse is while this card is in your hand, uh, and a minion dies, you infuse. So this one can endly infuse, uh, endlessly infuse. So if you have 20 minions die, friendly minions die, you get 20 more damage on this. Okay. Um, so you, yeah, okay. You want this in your hand as fast as possible. I remember seeing this card somewhere, but I don't, I don't remember how, how good it was, but if, <laughs> if I'm just looking at it, um, depending on how much you can infuse, I have to I have to guess that if you're playing something like Death Knight, which has like all the corpses and stuff, you're gonna power this up really really fast, and then you drop this down as a ten mana ten ten that just like deals ten damage. You heal for ten because it has life still, right? That's how that works. Yep. Yep. It seems yes. pretty specific, actually. It seems pretty specific. I don't know if you can just put this in every single deck, but if you have a control deck, like I I guess maybe like the the Blood Death Knight, you would put this in just because you have the hero power that just gives plus one to Sire Denatrius. So it would be good, but everywhere else, I guess it'd just be like okay. All right, so. <laughs> This card is actually from the last expansion. This isn't from this expansion. Oh, okay. Uh, th this card was very good uh -huh. in the last expansion. Very, very good. Now, I added this card in because people are calling this the best legendary of this expansion for basically the reason that you just said. You put this in any Death Knight deck, which is already using the corpse mechanic. And surprisingly, it's actually not that hard to get this in your hand. It's pretty consistent. This card is still one of the best cards in the format by far. Uh, even with all the new Death Knight stuff in the game. You know who you know is, uh, what class runs this the most? Just take a guess. Uh, <clears throat> it's Druid! No, <laughs> why? Wait, does Druid... Control Druid never played that many memes, right? I guess with Druid like, has, spreading play bro, back you, in the day? Listen, Druid is one of these classes that just can do everything. It's absolutely disgusting. They are... They're, they're nonsense. And they ramp. And they have consistent draw. They're they're like the god tier class currently. They people wanted this card nerf before the expansion was released because they were tired of losing to this card. This card is still 10 mana. Uh, it is still like the exact same way it looks here now. It will mm -hmm. I will probably get to take a guess that this card will end up being nerfed so that other stuff can actually take the limelight. Now, before you go, Mr. Sunny, I want to show you something that harson has been doing recently. Um, and it's with the art direction of the card, uh, art direction of the card. So I showed you a new mm -hmm. I'm going to show you him again. I'm going to put him here. This is what they call a signature card. Okay. It's the same card. I just want to hear your opinion on okay. the art style okay. from someone who's not playing Hearthstone. Okay. Oh, huh? Wait, that's real? <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's a real card. <laughs> No, this is like this is like fan art or something of a failed artist. No, okay, I, I like that they're using new artwork for Anubrakan himself, but where are the colors? Where's literally like where where's the thing that makes this a Hearthstone card? Like the reason I like Hearthstone was because of like the cartoony, colorful thing. Even in like the series expansions, they still had like these really wacky and funny looking characters. This is like void of all of that. Uh, you are at least in my opinion, I agree with everything you said. I think that the signature cards, even though the artist did a really good job on the art itself and designing what Blizzard asked them to do, it just doesn't fit in Hearthstone. And yeah. on board, it's even worse. In your hand, it looks ridiculous. It just, it, it just I don't know. Anyways, I just want to get your opinion on that. Anyways, Mr. Sunny, thanks for coming. I'm glad you had fun. You sound like you had a great time. Yeah, thanks for I having think. me. Yeah, my strategy here was I know you're going to show me new cards of a new class, so I'm just going to rate them all like really good, except like one or two of them, and I'll probably get most of them right. So that, that was very successful. I'm hyped to do this again. <laughs>